Today we will learn some basics related to classification. Many organisms are found on earth. All are different from each other in some form or the other. Some organisms such as bacteria are so small that it is necessary to use a microscope to see them. While some organisms such as whales and trees are very large. Different organisms have different body sizes, places of living, ways of obtaining food, etc. In this way, the creatures on earth are full of variations. The diversity found in different organisms of a region is called a biodiversity. There is so much biodiversity on earth that we cannot study each organism independently one after another. It will take too much time. But if we form groups based on different organisms, then these groups can be studied easily and in a short time. Forming groups based on similarities and differences of organisms is called Classification of organism. This is important because by classification of organisms, we can study various organisms easily and systematically. We will find it easy to find similarities and differences among different groups. From this, we can find out how an organism has evolved. It will also help us to know how the geographical distribution of plants and animals takes place. Since ancient times, many attempts have been made to classify organisms. Aristotle classified organisms based on their habitat as land, water, air, etc. But this is not an appropriate method of classification. For example, Various organisms like human, creeping creatures, different plants, etc. live on land, but there are quite a few variations except the place of living. Therefore, classification of organisms based on habitat can be misleading. Another way of classifying organisms is to classify the organism on basis of similar and different characteristics. Characteristics are the visible features of an organism. For example, a specific feature of an organism, such as having five fingers in the hand, is a characteristic. Similarly, specific tasks, such as the ability to run, are also a characteristic. Organisms with similar characteristics are placed in one group for classification. Then, based on other characteristics, subgroups of that group are formed. In this way, groups of organisms can be classified into hierarchies. The next level of hierarchy have all the characteristics that are present in the previous level, but different groups of same level differ from each other in any characteristic. Let us now discuss the characteristics on which we do the classification. Presence or absence of nucleus. Cells of some organisms do not have nucleus. These are called prokaryotes. Organisms that have nuclei in their cells are called eukaryotes. Cells are more efficient by having nucleus and cellular structures. Number of cells in an organism. The body of unicellular organisms such as amoeba is made up of single cell while the body of multicellular organisms is made up of many cells. Both have different body structures. Cells in multicellular organisms become specialized which helps in division of labor in the body. Method of obtaining food Different organisms have different methods of obtaining food. The body composition of organisms that make food themselves 
and those that obtain food from others are different. The body of plants develop in terms of making food while the body of animals develops in terms of obtaining food from outside. Green plants have chlorophyll by which they absorb sunlight and with the help of photosynthesis make their own food. Animals do not have chlorophyll so they are unable to perform photosynthesis. In this way, green plants come in one group and different animals including humans and parasites come in another group. Body Organization Different organisms have different body organization. Like simple organisms such as Hydra, a group of similar type of cells perform all the functions. Whereas in humans, tissues are formed from cells and organs are formed from tissues. And specialized organs perform dedicated function. Classification of organisms can also be done on this basis. Now, let's understand another important aspect of classification. Classification and Evolution The development of characters of an organism in successive generations is called evolution. A hierarchy built on the basis of similar characteristics gives an idea of how an organism must have evolved. We also find that the body structure of some organisms has not changed significantly, whereas other organisms have undergone more changes. We call the first type of organisms as primitive or lower organisms, whereas the second type of organisms are called advanced or higher organisms. Keep in mind that these words are not related to progress. To remove this confusion, we can call the first type of organisms as old organisms and second type of organisms as new organisms. The body structure of new organisms is more complex than the body structure of older organisms. Today we have learned some basics related to classification. Today we will learn about Kingdom Monera, Protista and Fungi. Scientists named Ernest Haeckel, Robert Whittaker and Carl Vos divided all living organisms into five kingdoms based on cellular structure, sources and methods of nutrition and body organization. These are the five kingdoms Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. In the previous video, we understood about the five kingdom classifications. Today, let us discuss Monera, Protista and Fungi in detail. First of all, we will understand about Monera. Organisms of Monera kingdom are the first living organisms created on the earth, such as bacteria, blue-green algae, that is cyanobacteria, mycoplasma, etc. All the organisms in this kingdom are unicellular and their body is made up of a prokaryotic cell that is, the cell does not have organized nucleus and cell organelles. Among them, genetic material, DNA is made up of single circular molecule. Some of these organisms have cell wall and some do not. Similarly, some creatures of this world like blue-green algae are autotrophic. That is, they can make their own food by the process of photosynthesis and some organisms like bacteria are heterotrophic. That is, they cannot make their own food. 
rather they depend on other living organisms and dead organic matter for food organisms of the monera kingdom produce offspring from asexual reproduction they mainly perform asexual reproduction by methods of binary fission and budding bacteria are found in almost all places they are also found in extreme and unfavorable conditions such as hot water springs ice deep sea and desert where it is difficult for other organisms to survive these can be classified into four groups based on their size circulococcus rod shaped bacilli comma shaped vibrio spiral shaped spirillum now let us know about the kingdom protista the kingdom protista mainly consist of aquatic organisms such as amoeba paramecium euglena etc most organisms of this kingdom are unicellular but have a body made up of eukaryotic cells that is the cell has a well organized nucleus and the other membrane bound organelles some of these organisms have cell wall and some do not some of these organisms have structures such as cilia flagella for locomotion with the help of pseudopodia amoeba performs locomotion and takes food the method of nutrition of some of these organisms is autotrophic and the method of nutrition of some organisms is heterotrophic some organisms such as trypanosoma protozoa are parasites which cause the disease like sleeping sickness in these some organisms reproduce by asexual method and some organisms reproduce through sexual reproduction cell fusion and formation of zygote are adopted in sexual reproduction now let's discuss the kingdom fungi the fungi kingdom is also called the fungus kingdom these includes organisms like yeast mold mushroom etc most fungi are multicellular made up of long thin thread like structures these structures are called fungal fibers but yeast is a unicellular they are made up of eukaryotic cells which have a well organized nucleus and other membranous cytoplasm their cells contain cell walls which is made up of complex carbohydrates called chitin some of these organisms depend on dead and rotten organic materials for nutrition these are called saprophytes some organisms receive their nutrition as living protoplasm from host body such as from an animal or a plant these are called parasites some fungi may also form permanent interconnections with algae such as blue green algae and higher grade plants that aid in nourishing each other such fungi are called symbiotic or lichen and such a relationship is called symbiosis in fungi reproduction can occur through asexual and sexual methods fragmentation fission and budding are the types asexual reproduction is caused by the spore called conidia sporangiospores or zoospores sexual reproduction takes place by oospores ascospores and basidiospores the structures in which all these spores are produced are called fruiting bodies sexual reproduction 
takes place in three stages. The first is the fusion of protoplasm of two motile or non-motile gametes known as plasmogamy. Then there is a fusion of two nuclei which is called karyogamy. In zygotes, haploid spores are formed by the method of meiosis from which new organisms are formed. Now, an interesting question for you. Just think, why do we keep our food in the refrigerator? Absolutely right. Keeping our food in refrigerator keeps the food from getting spoiled by bacteria and fungi. So now you must have understood these kingdoms. So today we have learned about Kingdom Monera, Protesta and Fungi. Today we will learn about the Kingdom Plantae and the subclasses of this kingdom Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta. Let us first discuss the Kingdom Plantae. Kingdom Plantae consists of all autotrophs which perform photosynthesis with the help of chlorophyll and can make their own food. All plants are members of Plantae Kingdom. They are all multicellular organisms which are formed from eukaryotic cells. That is, they have well-defined nuclei in cells and membrane-bound organelles. They contain cell wall which are mainly made up of cellulose. Different functions in their body are performed by tissues. Due to the presence of chlorophyll, most organisms in this class are autotrophic but some of these organisms are also heterotrophs. Some of these organisms produce offspring from sexual reproduction and some from asexual reproduction. Let us now understand the classification of Kingdom Plantae. The first level of classification is based on whether the major body parts of the plant are fully developed or differentiated. Plants whose bodies are without differentiation, are placed in the subclass Thallophyta. The next level is made on the basis whether there are specific tissues for the transport of water and other substances in the body of the plants. Plants that do not have specific tissues for conduction in their body are placed in the subclass Bryophyta. Plants that have tissues for conduction are classified based on their ability to hold seed. Seedless plants are placed in the subclass Pteridophyta. Then we classify seed producing plants on the basis of whether the seed is inside or outside the fruit. Plants whose seeds grow outside of the fruit, that is, if seeds are in open state, then such plants are called gymnosperms. And those plants whose seeds grow inside the fruit, that is, the seeds are in closed state, are called angiosperms. Angiosperms can be classified into monocots and dicots based on the number of cotyledons. Among them, Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta, the plants in these three groups have very inconspicuous or hidden sex organs and they lack the ability to produce seeds. So, they are called cryptogams. But in gymnosperms and angiosperms, the reproductive organs are fully developed and differentiated. 
they produce seeds through sexual reproduction hence these groups are called phanerogam the seeds consist of embryo along with the stored food when the embryo develops into a new organism it gets nutrition from the stored food let's talk about thallophyta in detail plants like eulothrix alva calidophora spirogyra cara etc are included in the class thallophyta their size also varies some organisms such as climodominus are unicellular which requires a microscope to view them whereas some organisms such as kelp are very large differentiation is not found in the body organization of these plants that is parts like roots stem leaf are not developed in them all the plants in this group are commonly called algae these are all aquatic plants they can do photosynthesis because of presence of chlorophyll and thus can make their own food that is they are autotrophic some algae are very small and they form layers on the surface of water these are called phytoplankton apart from water thallophytes are also found in moist stones soil and wood some of these plants such as blue green algae form permanent interrelationship with certain species of fungi that gives various benefits to both we call this relationship symbiosis thallophytes have various methods of reproduction in spirogyra asexual reproduction occurs by fragmentation the asexual reproduction in chlamydomonas results from the origin of various spores called zoospores in spirogyra cara etc sexual reproduction occurs by fertilization of gametes now let's discuss bryophyta in this class liverworts such as marxia and moss such as funaria are included they are often found in moist and shady areas of hills bryophytes are also called amphibians of kingdom plantae because plants of this class live on land but for sexual reproduction they depend on water their body do not have tissues for conduction of water and other substances from one part to other part they absorb water and nutrients from the surface and the material is carried from cell to cell their body is like thallus and is straight they are attached to substratum by unicellular and multicellular rhizoids they do not have developed structures like roots stem and leaves but they have similar structures so their bodies are differentiated than thallophyta in these sexual organs are multicellular the male sex organ is called anthridium and the female sex organ is called archegonium from anthridia male gamete anthrozoid is developed which is released on water here its fertilization occurs with the female gamete egg and the zygote is formed it is developed into sporophyte some of its cells are converted into spores it develops and produces new organisms now let's understand pteridophyta plants of the type marsilia fern etc are included in pteridophyta this class of plant kingdom consists of all those plants whose body develops completely into roots stems and leaves that means their body is completely differentiated they have specific tissues for the transport of water 
and other necessary substances from one part of the body to another. We call such tissues as conducting tissues. Of them, xylem tissue transports water, while phloem tissue transports food and other substances from one part of the plant to another. They neither have flowers nor they bear seeds. The gametophytes have male and female reproductive parts which are called anthridium and archegonium respectively. Antherozoids are released from the antheridium and reach the mouth of archegonium through water. The egg present in archegonium fuses with the male gamete to produce zygote which develops into a new individual. So today we learned about Kingdom Plantae and subclasses of this kingdom Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta. Today we will learn about subclasses of Kingdom Plantae, Gymnosperms and Angiosperms. In the previous video, we have discussed the Thallophyta, Bryophyta and Pteridophyta subclasses of the plant kingdom. Let us now understand Gymnosperm, a subclass of a Kingdom Plantae. In the garden, you must have seen plants such as cycas and Christmas tree. Gymnosperms The term is made up of two Greek words, gymnos meaning uncovered or naked and sperm meaning seeds. These are plants whose seeds are not covered by the ovary wall but are in open, that is, exposed or naked positions in small twigs or cones. For this reason, they are also called gymnosperm or naked seed. They include medium or tall trees and shrubs such as pinus and cycas. These plants are perennial and woody. The body of gymnosperms is fully developed and differentiated in different parts like root, stem, leaves, etc. But they lack flowers and fruits. The lack of flowers and fruits makes them different from angiosperms. Since gymnosperms do not have flowers, ovules are in the open state. Pollination is mainly through air. The seeds produced after fertilization are also in open state. Generally, they are found in colder regions where the snowfall is high. These plants have different adaptations such as leaves are of small area and have a shape of needle so that Snow does not accumulate on the leaves. Some gymnosperms have simple and composite leaves. They can tolerate extreme temperatures, humidity and air. The stems of some gymnosperms such as pinus are branched while the stems of some gymnosperms such as cycas are unbranched. They use vascular tissues such as xylem and phloem to transport various substances from one part to another. Mainly, they have tap root. Some gymnosperms, such as pinus, associate with fungi called mycorrhiza. Similarly, some gymnosperms, such as cycas, cooperate with cyanobacteria called coralloid roots. The reproductive organs are on different sporophylls of the same tree. The spores are arranged 
like a spiral on the stem. They form dense cones that are found in upper places of the plant. Female cones are generally larger than male cones. Pollination in these plants is mainly by air. After transfer of the male gamete to the female cone by air, it is brought to female gamete that is egg by the pollen tube. The fertilization of male gametes with the female gamete produces zygote. It grows and develops into seed. The female cones open at the appropriate time and the seeds get dispersed. Now, let's understand angiosperms. The word angiosperm is made up of two Greek words, angio meaning covered and sperm means seed. In this way, plants whose seeds are covered inside fruits are called angiosperms. The main feature of these plants is the presence of flowers. Their seeds develop in the ovaries of flowers which later take the form of fruits. Hence, we also call these plants as flowering plants. They are the largest class of plants. These range from small plants such as wolfia to giant trees such as eucalyptus. They are found in various places. From angiosperms, we get food, medicines, fodder, wood and other products. Angiosperms produce offspring through sexual reproduction. The reproductive organs of these plants are found in flowers. If you look inside the circle of petals of the flower, you will find some thin tubes having inflated tops. These are the male sex organ of plant called stamen. The stamen has two parts. The upper inflated part is called anther in which the pollen grains are formed that has male gametes. The long and thin part attached to anther is called the filament. In the center of the flower, there is a jug-like part called pistil. It is the female sex organ of the plant. It consists of female gametes called egg in the ovary. The transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma is called pollination. It takes place with the help of abiotic components such as air, water or biological components such as insects, animals like butterflies and bees, etc. Two male gametes from the pollen grain are released into the ovary by pollen tube. One of these male gametes fuses with an egg cell to form zygote and the second male gamete fuses with bipolar nuclei to form an endosperm. Then the zygote develops in the seed and ovary develops in the fruit. The seeds have cotyledons which turn green after germination of the seeds. Depending on number of cotyledons, angiosperms can be classified into two parts. If the seed of plant has single cotyledon, such as bamboo, onion, etc., then such plants are called monocotyledons. But if a plant has two cotyledons, such as a banyan tree, then such plants are called dicotyledons. Let's understand their characteristics. Roots in monocot plants are usually fibrous, whereas in dicotyledon plant, there are tap roots. In monocot plants, stems can be hollow, such as bamboo, can be virtual, such as banana, 
or can be swachhi form such as onion whereas the stem is strong and tough in dicotyledon plant in case of leaves the leaves in monocot plants have a parallel venation while the leaves in dicotyledon plant have a reticulate venation flowers of both types of plants are also different in monocot plants flowers are three parts or multiple of three whereas in dicotyledon plants flowers are four or five parts so you must have understood gymnosperms and angiosperms very well today we have learned about subclasses of kingdom plantae gymnosperms and angiosperms perms perms Today we will learn about Porifera, Cilentrata, Platyhelminthus, Nematoda, Annelida, groups of invertebrates of Kingdom Animalia. Many animals are seen all around us. Classification of these is necessary for studying them. Virtually all animals are eukaryotic, multicellular. and heterotrophs their body is definitely made of cells but the cells of their body do not have cell wall like cells of the plant body most animals are movable that is they can move from one place to another animals all around us are found with different body structures and different sizes we can find similarities and classify animals based on different characteristics like arrangement of cells body symmetry patterns of digestive system nature of xylem circulatory system and reproductive system let us understand some features levels of organization cells in some animals like sponges are in scattered clusters which we will call cellular level organization in some animals such as cilentrate cells perform their function by forming tissue this is called tissue level organization in some animals such as liver fluke and other higher associations tissue organizes and makes organs where each organ performs a specific function in some animals different organs together make an organ system and perform special functions in the body symmetry some animals such as body of crab can be divided into two parts in a plane in such a way that the two parts are exactly like each other we say that such animals are symmetric some animals like sponges are asymmetric diploblastic and triploblastic organization in some animals like hydra cells are arranged in two embryonic layers such organization is called diploblastic in some animals such as rabbits cells are arranged in three embryonic layers such organization is called triploblastic xylem some animals such as locust have a cavity between the body wall and the elementary canal called xylem and those which has xylem in the body are called the xylomates some animals such as tapeworms do not have body cavity they are called acelomates in some animals such as roundworm the body cavity is in the form of sac 
scattered between the middle skin and the outer skin. These animals are called pseudocoelomate. Segmentation The body of some animals like earthworms is divided into hierarchical segments on both external and internal side, while the body of some animals like planaria is not fragmented. Classification of kingdom animalia can be done on the basis of the presence of rod like structure on the surface of the organism in the embryonic stage or any other stage called a notochord or a backbone. Animals whose notochord is present in the embryonic stage are called chordates, whereas in other animals the notochord is not present. They are called non chordates or invertebrate let's explore the subclasses of invertebrata in this video porifera these are a group of animals with pores commonly known as sponges they are found in saline areas such as the sea some examples of these are euplectella Spongula, Sycon, etc. They are immovable and attached to some base. They have many pores in their entire body called ostia. They are connected to the canal system under which the circulation of water, oxygen, and food takes place in the body. Their body is covered with rigid covering or external skeleton. Their body structures are simple. And do not differentiate into tissues. They can produce offspring through sexual and asexual reproduction. Cylindrata or Cnidaria. These include organisms like Hydra, jellyfish, anemone, etc. They are all multicellular aquatic animals. And their body organization is at tissue level. Their body organization is more differentiated than that of Porifera. There is a coelom in their body. Their body is made up of two cell layers outer skin ectoderm and inner skin endoderm, and hence they are diploblastic. The space between two layers is filled with jelly like substance, which is made up of mesoglia. Some of their species, such as corals, live in groups, while some species, like Hydra, remain alone. They can reproduce both sexually and asexually. Platyhelminthus or flatworm. These include free animals such as planaria and parasites such as liver fluke, tapeworm, etc. Their body structure is more complex than earlier classes and their body organization is at the organ level. Their body is dorsiventrally flattened. Hooks and suckers are found in their body with the help of which they remain attached to the host body. They do not have cavity in their body, but two parts of their body can be made in such a way that both the right and left parts are exactly matching each other, that is, their body is bilateral symmetric. Their tissue differentiation is made up of three cellular levels, the outer skin, the ectoderm, the inner skin, the endoderm, and the middle skin, mesoderm. So, they are triploblastic. In these, both male and female reproductive organs are present in each organism, and they can produce offspring through sexual and asexual reproduction. Nematoda or escalimenthus or roundworm. These include roundworm, filarial worm, pinworm, etc. 
they are free living aquatic terrestrial and they are also parasitic in plants and animals they are bilateral symmetrical triploblastic animals whose bodies are cylindrical and the last part is pointed tissues are found in them but the organs are not fully developed their sacrum body is called pseudocoelom various diseases caused by nematodes in humans are elephantiasis and ascariasis among them male and females are different females are larger than males annelida or segmented worms these include some aquatic animals such as nereids leeches and some terrestrial animals such as earthworms generally they are bilateral symmetric triploblastic animals in these body organization is at organ level in these the two body cavity is found there are specific transportation digestive excretory and nervous systems for which the different organs are realistically differentiated their body is externally divided into segments the various segments are connected to each other by ring like structures these ring like structures are called annuli due to these characteristics organisms in this group are called annelid annulus in latin means subtle rings among them some animals like nereids are monosexual that is male and female are different and some animals like earthworm and leech are bisexual they produce offspring through sexual reproduction today we, today have, we have learned, learned about porifera cylindrata platyhelminthes nematoda annelida groups of invertebrates of kingdom animalia today we will learn about arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata groups of invertebrates of kingdom animalia arthropoda or animals with joined legs this is the largest association of animals in the kingdom including insects these include creatures such as butterflies fly spider scorpion crab etc they are triploblastic and bilateral symmetrical and have a segmented body in these the circulatory system is in an open state that is blood does not flow in the vessels among them the coelom is filled with blood their legs are attached the body is divided into head chest and abdomen arthros means joint and poda means legs hence the organisms of this group are called arthropods in these males and females are separate and produce offspring through sexual reproduction mollusca or soft bodied animals these include animals such as snail oyster octopus chiton etc they are found in aquatic and terrestrial areas their body is soft the body of some organisms is protected by calcareous shell of hard calcium their body organization is at organ level they have bilateral symmetry they are triploblastic they have differentiation in various body parts including the head muscular foot 
and an intimate visceral hum. They have a silomic cavity but is very less. There is a little fragmentation in their body. Open circulatory system are found in these animals. In the mouth for food, they have a grafted part like sand which is called retrigiva. Gills and alveoli or both are used for respiration and have a kidney-like structure for excretion. Near this, sensory tentacles are found. These reproduce sexually where males and females are separated and are oviparous. Echinodermata Echinodermata is the word in which echino means prickly and derma means skin. In this way, echinodermata are a group of animals whose skin is covered with thorns such as starfish, sea urchin, brittle star, sea lily, etc. Echinoderms are marine animals. At larval stage, they are bilaterally symmetrical and in adult stage, they are radially symmetrical. They contain a skeleton of calcium carbonate. Coelom is found in them. They are triploblastic animals. Water conduction systems are their main feature which helps them in moving, holding food and breathing. They clearly lack an excretion system. They reproduce through sexual reproduction. In these, males and females are separated. Fertilization of gametes is usually external. So today we have learned about arthropod, mollusca and echinodermata group of invertebrates of kingdom Animalia. Animalia. Today we will learn about the vertebrata group of the animal kingdom. We know that some organisms have a rod-like structure present at the dorsal side of their body in their embryonic stage or any other stage of life which is known as notochord or backbone. Animals whose notochord is present in the embryonic state are called chordates. Let's discuss chordates today. Some characteristics of the organisms of the chordate group are the presence of notochord at some stage of life, hollow nerve cord and paired pharyngeal gill slits. All chordates are bilateral symmetric, triploblastic and coelomate. Organ level organization is found in their body. Their heart is located ventrally. They have a closed circulatory system. The chordates can be divided into protochordates and vertebrata. Let's understand protochordata. These include Ascidia, Herdmania, Amphioxus, etc. Their bodies have bilateral symmetry. They are often marine creatures. They are triploblastic coelomates, but their main feature is the presence of notochord. Notochords are long rod like structures found on the back of animals. Now, let's talk about vertebrata. These include various animals like cattle, frog, tortoise, snake, various birds and mammals. 
in the embryonic stage of vertebrata group animals notochord is formed in the adult stage it changes in the cartilaginous or bony vertebral column we can divide vertebrates into six classes let's understand those some animals in the kingdom vertebrata are jawless while others have jaw we place jawless animals in class cyclostomata jaw is a mouth opening and closing structure in some vertebrates this structure is not present that is they are jawless they are placed in class cyclostomata for example petromyzon or lamprey and myxin or hagfish all these are external parasites of some fish they have elongated eel like body the mouth is circular and the skin is slimy and scaleless they have 6 to 15 pairs of gill spores for respiration and have a closed circulatory system they have cranial and spinal cartilage they reproduce through sexual reproduction except for cyclostomate other vertebrates have jaw let's see their features pisces or fishes all the fish are kept in this class for example shark tuna rohu catla etc their bodies are streamlined and they swim in water with the help of fleshy tail their skin is covered with scales or plates they use gills for respiration with the help of which they obtain oxygen dissolved in water their heart is two chambered they are cold blooded meaning their body temperature does not remain constant the skeleton of some fish such as sharks is made up of cartilage only the skeleton of other fishes such as tuna is made of bones they all lay eggs for reproduction class amphibia the term amphibia consists of amphi and bias amphi means both that is two and bias means life in this way they are animals that can live on both water and land among them are frogs salamanders toads etc they have two pairs of legs they do not have fish like flakes on their skin but mucus glands are found on their skin they contain gills or lungs for respiration and their heart is three chambered they lack an external skeleton male and female are different in them they are egg laying organisms that is oviparous reptilia this class contains all those vertebrates that move by creeping or crawling such as turtles snakes lizards crocodiles etc they are all cold blooded animals their body is covered with dry scales they do not have external ear openings but tympanum represents ear some organisms do not have legs but some organisms have two pairs of legs they breathe with the help of lungs in most reptiles the heart is made up of three chambers while the crocodile has four chambers in its heart males and females are different they are all egg laying animals 
Their eggs are protected by tough outer shell. Birds or aves. These are warm blooded animals, meaning their body temperature remains constant. These include birds such as parrots, peacocks, ostrich, pigeons, sparrow, etc. They have two pairs of legs. Forelimbs are modified into organs that help in flying, that is, wings. Hind limbs are adapted for walking, swimming, or perching. They have beaks. Their bodies are covered with feathers. They breathe with the help of lungs. The endoskeleton is made of long bones. The bones are hollow and have air sacs. It helps them to reduce their weight, which helps them in flying. They all are egg-laying animals. Mammals These include animals such as humans, whales, camels, tigers, echidna, etc. They are found in all types of environments such as land, water, desert, dark cave, forest, etc. Their main feature is the presence of mammary glands in the body in the female. This gland produces milk which nourishes the newborn. They have two pairs of legs and are adapted for walking, swimming, running, climbing trees, flying, etc. They have hair follicles on their skin. Sweat and oil glands are found in the skin. External ear pinna is present. Their heart is made up of four chambers. Respirations in these occur with the help of diaphragm. Male and female are different and fertilization is internal. Some mammals, such as platypus, produce eggs. All other mammals give birth to an infant. Animals that give birth to a baby are called viviparous. Today we have learned the vertebrata group of animal kingdom. 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 Today we will learn five kingdom classification and binomial nomenclature. In the beginning, Carlos Linus divided the organisms into two kingdoms. One was Animalia and other was Plantae. This classification was made on the basis of mobility of the organism. Those organisms which can change the place are kept in the kingdom Animalia and those organisms which cannot change their place are kept in the kingdom Plantae. But there was some problem with this classification. Fungi which does not contain chlorophyll is not a plant, yet is kept in the kingdom Plantae. To overcome these problems, various attempts were made to classify the organisms. Out of them, the five kingdom classification is most popular. Let us understand it. Scientists named Ernest Haeckel, Robert Whittaker and Carl Woese divided all living organisms into five kingdoms based on cellular structure, sources and methods of nutrition, and body organization, whose names are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animalia. It has been observed that in any kingdom, there are also organisms which are different from each other 
in terms of any specific characteristics. That's why each kingdom is again classified into subgroups. Similarly, on the basis of characteristics, organisms are divided further into smaller groups at different levels, from which a hierarchy is developed. In this hierarchy, there are kingdoms at the upper level and at the lower levels respectively. There are phylum, class, order, family, genus and species are placed at the lowest level. Species are the group of organisms that have considerable similarities in terms of body organization and can reproduce with each other. For example, all humans come under the same species which are called sapiens. This species belongs to kingdom Animalia. Since in species there are organisms that are very similar to each other and can interbreed, that's why the species cannot be divided further. Hence, species is called a unit of classification. Five kingdoms proposed by Whittaker are Monera, Protista, Fungi, Planty and Animalia. We will talk about them in upcoming videos. Now, let's talk about binomial nomenclature. We know that organisms have different names in different languages. This can cause various difficulties such as when a person is talking about an organism in one language, the person speaking another language may not understand which organism is being talked about. To solve this problem, the binomial nomenclature proposed by Carolus Linus was chosen. In this method, any organism is given a scientific name and the organism is known by this name. This name has two terms which are words of language Latin. The first word denotes the genus of that organism and the second word denotes the species of the organism. For example, a domestic cat has a scientific name Felis domestica. This means that domestic cat belongs to genus Felis and species domestica. In this way, wild cat has the name Felis chaus, in which Felis is the genus and chaus is the species. While writing scientific names, we need to keep some rules in mind. Let's understand them. The genus name must start with an uppercase letter of English alphabet. Species name must start with lowercase letter of English alphabet. In printed form, the scientific names are written in italics. But when these are written by hand, both the genus and the species are underlined separately. Now here is a task for you. Find out the scientific names of any five organisms and try to write them correctly. The branch of biology that identifies, describes, classifies and names animals is called taxonomy. Today we have learned five kingdom classifications and binomial nomenclature. Thank you.